On tap, Gordon Biersch. Hi, I'm James Knott, and this is your Better Beer Authority. Today, I have Chris Altmott from Gordon Biersch Brewing in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Chris, you already helped us out with two beer reviews. Thank you so much. And to, now we're going to talk about Gordon Biersch. Describe Gordon Biersch to to the people out there. Sure. Uh, Gordon Biersch is a little bit different from a lot of the craft breweries in uh, the United States. Uh, we really focus uh, almost exclusively on the German styles of lager beer. We do a few of the ales, but again, strictly German. Uh, so we uh, we really go by the uh, you know the Reinheitsgebot, that uh, nearly 500 year old law, and the kind of the more modern interpretations of that. So all of our beers uh, uh, are very authentically produced as far as German uh, methods. Um, and then we also import quite a bit of German uh, uh, raw ingredients as well. Okay, well what is your top selling beer and then what is your favorite beer? Sure, our, uh, our biggest selling beer is our Meritzen. It's a traditional Oktoberfest lager. Uh, the, the word Meritzen starts from the German word for the, the month of March which used to be the end of the brewing season. So they'd take all the barley they had left over, they'd make stronger batches of beer. And then when they could start brewing again in the fall, they would uh, throw large parties, uh, which kind of became the Oktoberfest. I mean, the, the true Oktoberfest uh, uh, it was the result of a wedding, but there are a lot of other local celebrations that were already being held. So um, that March beer, the Märzen beer, was uh, what was served at the Oktoberfest. So it's kind of, uh, a lot of people wonder why a March beer would be uh, mm -hmm. so synonymous with that, but that's the story. How did you get into brewing? I started as a home brewer. Uh, made my first batch in about 91 and really fell in love with it. I was determined to kind of get into the business. Uh, back in those days, in uh, the early 90s, not a lot of craft beer uh, not a lot of craft breweries uh, in Ohio yet, so. Yeah, it sounds uh, like pie in the sky yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Kind of bided my time for a little while and then uh, dove in um, first with a place up in Toledo called Mommy Bay Brewing Company, and then there was a um, Australian-themed restaurant brewery in, uh, in uh, Westlake, Ohio called okay. Wallabies. How does your personal philosophy of brewing and Gordon Biersch's philosophy, how do they crisscross and how do they differ? It's a pretty good match, uh, really. I've always been a, a fan of lager beers. Um, you know, that crisp, clean character of them is really what draws me in. Um, you know, really, that lager yeast does a great job of converting the, you know, the sugar into alcohol very cleanly so that the malt and the hop flavor comes through and that's really what you're tasting. You know, so many times with ales, and is probably the best example, you know, the yeast is a large part of the flavor profile. And uh, while I certainly enjoy a nice Hefeweizen, and uh, I think a lot of times I'm looking for uh, uh, a really nice sessionable type of beer that you can uh, drink a few of, and lagers usually fit that bill. Okay. Does Gordon Beers make a light beer? You know, when I first started, there we still had a light beer, GB Premium Light, I think we called it, but, you know, that was one of the first things we phased out after I took over there. Mm -hmm. uh, it just really wasn't, uh, wasn't a good seller for us. And, uh, you know, I think it was an effort, especially since we're right next to the arena, a lot of people walk in and they have no idea we make our own beer there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was an effort to try to reach out to those people. But uh, I think really with our Golden Export, which is pretty nice, light, crisp, um, kind of an entry-level beer, uh, works out very well. Um, for that, much better than the than the light. So, we do have some bottles when people come in and uh, are determined to have a Bud Light or a Miller Light. We can we can offer them that because those guys do uh, light beer better than we can possibly do it. Yeah. So today we're drinking a Maybach. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, this is kind of a pre-release of the Maybach. Um, it's uh, been in the fermenter for about uh, six uh, six seven weeks at this point, but still has a little way to go. So. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're doing this here in uh, mid-March, mid so April 7th is really when we're going to release it at the brewery. Um, and it's that uh, very long, cold lagering that's going to really clean this beer up and make it shine. Uh, right now, it still has a little bit of yeast uh, in suspension, as you can probably see. Uh, time is going to really allow that yeast to sediment out, and once that leaves the beer, um, 
the, that really rich uh, combination of uh, Pilsner and Munich malts uh, is really going to shine through. It's got a, a fairly low hopping rate. It's uh, 25 IBUs, mm. but uh, considering that it's uh, the original gravity is uh, you know, 16 and a half degrees Play-Doh, nice strong beer. It's uh, about 7.2 alcohol by volume. Um, that uh, that hopping rate is still relatively low in comparison to how much malt is used in the beer. Yeah, can you explain to people the difference between what you're doing and what they might find in the stores? Gordon Beers Brewery restaurants are a little bit different from the Gordon Beers Brewing Company. Um, it was founded by Dan Gordon and Dean Biersch, that's the Gordon and the Biersch, uh, in 1988 in Palo Alto, California. So we, we maintain um, the recipes, the Mertzen, uh, the Hefeweizen, uh, we try very hard to make those the same beer, both with uh, the 38 locations for Gordon Biersch, uh, as well as with what you'd find in the bottles. Um, uh, but there are a few brands that we do that the brewing company side doesn't really do. Our Schwartz beer is one example of that. Yeah, I was just going to ask, do you ever veer from from the you know, German styles or? We've you know we've lightened it up a little bit. Um, we still really maintain a commitment to the Rheinheitske, but. Um, but we have uh, started to open up a few of the other styles where we're kind of um, all playing with German beer a little bit. Uh, right now we've got uh, a style called a uh, double hop Pilsner, uh, which is definitely not uh, the straight Czech, you know, Czech style Pilsner. We're, it's kind of really hopped about like an, uh, an American IPA would be. Um, but using the German ingredients, okay. so, so kind of reinterpreting that a little bit. Uh, not exactly like an imperial pilsner, a little more uh, subdued than that, but uh, along those lines. So uh, little by little, we have uh, kind of opened things up. Now those are just draft offerings that we do on a seasonal basis. And okay. Change things up here every once in a while. All right. Hey, Chris, thanks for coming. Thanks for having we me. We really, really appreciate having you. It's been it's a pleasure. Chris Altmont from Gordon Biersch, the Columbus, Ohio. And if you're in Columbus, definitely go down to the Arena District and try some of their beer. I was in there a couple weeks ago and it was some of the freshest, most delicious beers that I've ever had. The Schwartz beer, the Maybach, the, the what was the summer beer we had? Summerbrow. Summerbrow, that was obviously in the summer a while ago, but uh, very good beers. I highly recommend it. And this, I'm James Knott, and this is your Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority.